They came from all over, the old, the young, and the not so young, from all walks of life, not only from the Laventil Hills where he was revered, and they converged on the environs of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in East Port of Spain, and for a moment, it was almost as if Rudolph Charles had not died. His body was there, and just as they habitually thronged him on the panorama stage every year, so they did this morning. Inside of the cathedral, they eulogized him. In 1974, from New York, he wrote me a very interesting letter, mentioning that he had returned from Bermuda, where he tuned some bands for Leslie Charles and Old Desper. And further, he had met Hugh Bord and most of his players, who heard his new tone to quote him. They all love it. When I return to the band, the band will be enriched by a striking and modern interpretation of what Pan is and what it is going to be. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the new sound that you hear that makes Despers sound unlike other steel bands. Although they may play the same tune with the same arrangement, there's a great difference in tonality and quality. Nature gave him the ability to be as precocious at middle age as he was when a youngster experimenting with an unmelodic art form. Nature forced fire from his mouth and put a hammer in his hand to instill a certain pride on the hill that is akin to self-worship. Rudolf Charles is the supreme god of the steel band. And I hope that those of influence politically in our midst will ensure that a monument is built to his memory. In fact, this concept is so important to me that I have actually brought the mold that Rudolf will be honored as a pharaoh on the hills of Laventel. And immediately I'll present the mold to my good friend, Colonel Bolt Williams, that he will get the great artists of this land, men like Terence Evelyn and Steve Derrick, to begin work immediately. Then they played and they sang for him. themselves, they commiserated with and consoled his grieving widow, Carol. And then, almost in the noonday sun, it was time for the cortege to leave the city, and the crowd had swollen by this time, reminiscent of other state occasions that had taken place at this venue, with everyone trying for every vantage point to see the chariot on which Rudolph Charles was to have taken his last ride. And they were not content to remain there. They also fought to get the specially laid on transportation that would take them to the banks of the Carony River for the final tribute. And there were the thousands who were able to make it. For Rudolf Charles, it was not merely dust to dust, ashes to ashes. To the very end, the metal that he so skillfully blended into the revolutionary musical instrument of the 20th century encased him. And they carried him slowly to the fire, the fire which he used to help shape the pan to consume him. This is Jones P. Madeira for TTT News. <laughs> 